Hey, everybody out there in Lita land, this is Jason Griffey, and I am here um, today to talk a little bit about a trend that I see coming in technology. Um, this is a trend that is largely already here, although I think the next two to three years are going to be really, really interesting, and that trend is uh, 3D printing. Um, this is sometimes called fabbing, which is short for fabrication. Um, there's actually a really, really good book about this uh, trend called Fab that uh, if you're interested at all, you should look up. Um, for those that aren't familiar, 3D printing is effectively the um, using a digital file that describes an object and then sending it to a three-dimensional printer that can use a substance, uh, sometimes plastic, sometimes resin, um, sometimes even foodstuffs. There are people that are playing with 3D printing and icing, for example. Uh, but uh, that takes the file and then um, uses extruded plastic to build it, so to speak, on, um, you know, in the real world. So what you have is the ability to model an object completely digitally and then effectively hit a button and have it pop out of your printer that's sitting on your desk. Um, the availability of this has been around for quite a while for high-end kind of prototyping of electronics. A lot of people, a lot of companies have these devices um, and have used them to do case manufacturing and to test fittings of, of electrical components and all sorts of things like that. But the prices of these and the, the technology that drives them has come down. So instead of costing many, 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 many tens of thousands of dollars, you can buy a 3D printer uh, for your desk for a little over a grand now. My favorite of these is the MakerBot by MakerBot Industries. They cost about $1,200 and you can print using extruded plastic. Um, just about anything you can think of. Um, everything from, there are plans online for everything from uh, action figures to uh, actual fully functioning clocks. You can actually print your own gears and assemble your own clock and put it together um, using one of these things. You can print a doorstop. You can print pretty much anything that is a physical, uh, you know, small physical object. Um, the MakerBot uh, printer is often, one of the models of it is called a cupcake printer because it prints things that are about the size of a cupcake um, for reference. These are really interesting, and um, they're interesting in a kind of a sci-fi sense in that it's getting us one step closer to the... Uh, to the Star Trek, you know, um, kind of ideal of creation from nothing. But it, um, it's also kind of interesting for libraries in a, in a few ways. One is that there's a lot of interesting metadata questions about this. How do, you, how do you describe physical objects in such a way that they're findable by the digital file that you need to print them out? Um, so that there's some, there's some interesting metadata kind of questions there. How do you, how do you catalog this sort of thing? Um, there's also some interesting copyright questions and some legal questions. What happens if I print um, a trademarked object in some way, or um, you know, is it possible for me to violate copyright law by printing a, an, a physical copy of a Barbie head, for example? Um, so you know, there's some really interesting questions here, and I, I think there's also something to be said for the role that libraries play in um, in showing people new technologies and uh, making, uh, especially new technologies that people can't afford individually, right? Part of what a library does is spread out our economic buying power so that uh, individuals can experience things they couldn't afford directly. So uh, there's some degree to which this is going to be important for something like this new technology of 3D printing. Um, I'm really excited. There are libraries that are definitely playing with it, and I think that we'll see a rise in that sort of thing over the next year or so. Uh, hopefully within the next uh, two to three years, the, the varying file types and things, there's, there's a lot of kind of issues that can be sorted out so that we get some standardization uh, on this, but I'm really excited. I think it's a really interesting new set of technologies, and I think that libraries, as always, are going to have their hand in it in some way. So, so that's my interesting trend. Uh, at least I hope it's interesting. And I hope that you guys find it interesting enough to go out do some research. Until um, we talk again, uh, hi, I'm Jason, and I hope to see you guys in New Orleans at the ALA Annual Conference.
Thanks a lot. Bye.